gave a budget in good time, 889 million budget. That is what they expected to use for the entire year. Now, for this uh, trip, they only needed 25 million, but they've been given only 7.2 million on their side. Money that is not enough to cater for all the things that Iron Bay Stars will be using for this uh, game against Ethiopia home and away. The Football Kenya Federation President Nick Mwendo in black and white is saying the governments need to up their game. At the same time, the Federation on their side's critics will say they need to get money so that they will not be in this mess. On 18th um, of August, we submitted our budget for the Ethiopia game. So we are going to Ethiopia away, and our camp is partially in Ethiopia. As we speak to you today, a member of staff is already in Bahadal to prepare for the team. Tomorrow and Sunday, the rest of the crew will move. So if we are successful tomorrow morning, the coach will move. And on Sunday, the final team will move. They will wait for the players in Ethiopia. So uh, Victor, Michael, and the rest of the team will go directly to Ethiopia. And so we want to train in Ethiopia on Monday and Tuesday so we can play. We couldn't have a camp here because it's more expensive to come here and then to go there. So today in the morning, the CEO has informed me that we have received 7.2 million, which only covers flights and accommodation. So as I speak to you, ladies and gentlemen, we do not have money to pay the players their allowances. We do not have money to pay the coaches their allowances and other logistics around Ethiopia. They don't have money for, uh, the, for paying the players. Not all players have, have traveled. The first batch has already left today with the uh, watchful eye, actually, of the tactician. So this tells you this is a big mess. And, and we just have to agree. It is a big mess from the Federation, from the government. Things need to be done in a different way. I am sitting on, on a po position where, by my take, would have been the Harambe stars would have gone and camped maybe in Ethiopia for a week before this time. Definitely. Like you say, it's a big mess. But remember, it's not only in football. It's happening in rugby. We saw it again with the Malkia strikers when they were heading out for the World Championships. Um, when are we ever going to take sports seriously? When is it ever going to be a priority to the powers that be? Not only the government, but also to the corporate world. Because uh, you look at the way funding comes through, and sometimes it's like people are doing you a favor. But the flip side is this. The federations as well have to professionalize themselves. They have to run themselves well. They have to have good revenue streams. And then we don't be talking about these uh, kind of messes that we find ourselves in. I mean. How many years after independence? Over 50 years after independence, and we're still begging for handouts. Uh, it's a big tragedy. I think everyone is to blame, the government, the federations, all the stakeholders. Everyone is to blame the government, the federation, and all the stakeholders. And still the government is to blame because of the poor facilities that we have in the country. Maybe I'll say that in black and white because we've had a host number of promises. Let me not even start mentioning the promises that we've been receiving from the government to make sure that we have the sports stadium and all the facilities up and ready to run and also to be able to host the different uh, sporting uh, events that we have here in the country. Something that does not augur that well with the Football Kenya Federation who say that the government needs ag again to style up and uh, aid them in getting the, faci the facilities because it is not their responsibility to make sure that they have that uh, facility. On the same time, a lot of people have been asking what will happen with the Western steamer and the city um, and Nairobi steamer and all the other steamers if they are to play in the same league, if they qualify and play in the same league. This is an issue that the Football uh, Kenya Federation in detail says that is not an issue because the managers, they might be uh, having maybe a similar name, but the sponsorship money and all that come from different stakeholders. So if Western steamer who already promoted the Kenyan Premier League and Nairobi steamer makes the cut and goes up there, nobody needs to be worried because there will be no level at which the managers will be affecting the way that these teams will be run. Nick Mondo in plenty, he had to talk about a lot, a host of issues that are affecting football here in the country. Uh, there have been a lot of talk about uh, the promotion uh, battle and uh, a lot of uh, issues about uh, one team being owned or managed by one particular company, something that is uh, uh, cl clearly stated at the FIFA statute. So what's your general take in assessment uh, specifically with the scenario in mind of uh, Western Steamer and uh, Nairobi Steamer in their quest of promotion? What happens if both teams make the cut? So two things is that if you look in the NSL, 
فاكر بعد كي بي ال نينا سال وي هاف كوستيما وي هاف نيروبي ستيما وي هاف وستن ستيما واي هافنت وي ديناي ذيم ذا اوبورتونيتي ذا يو انديرستاندينغ سو ذير از نو واي اف ذي كواليفاي يو كان ديناي ذيم ذا اوبورتونيتي وين يو جيف ذيم ذا اوبورتونيتي ان سال كي بي ال از نوت ا سبيشال ليغ اتس جاست ا سيم ليغ از از ان سال سو ذا اونر شيب اوف ذيس كلابز از owned by different entities the sponsorship is a one that's different but the entity that owns Nairobi Steamer is not the entity that owns Western Steam legally for us happy even if every team called itself Steamer in the Premier League so long as the entity that owns it is not the same then we are okay yeah teams that went up Uh, I think only was it when I was come down. In in other leagues, whenever a team, three teams go up, automatically two or both all three come down. Last season we didn't have that. This season was it was gone down. Maybe another one may come down. But look, there are teams that got promoted and stayed there. Zoia, Sharks. So that is how you measure a league that's below. I think. We have done a fantastic job getting it done. Of course, there are hitches, sometimes referees, payments, things like that, sponsorship. But we are working on it. We had, Moses, you know the issues we had before I got here. I don't need to recount them. Uh, we couldn't even get our players to camp, let alone something else. We never had a youth league in the country. We never trained coaches in the country. 2,000 coaches trained. 17,000 youngsters registered and playing. Centers of excellence is uh, established, functional. Under 15 national team playing. Uh, referees trained and, 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 and qualified. Entered in the major leagues. For the first time qualified for the Cup of Nations for women. Under 20 qualifications. My friend, the list is endless. We cannot compare ourselves to where we've been before. If you've been in football, you know that. However, Can we take it a notch higher? If we win and go to the Cup of Nations after 14 years, that's something. But can we go there and maintain it? Good question. Can we then, but the big thing is, can we develop these youngsters to a level where we can have a hundred youngsters, super youngsters every year? So this problem of players, we can solve it going forward. Players at a high level to go to a World Cup, like Colombia does. We can do it. And that's where we're putting our money. Can we solve this financial challenge we are discussing today? So that the debt in the Federation, $2 million plus, can we clean it up? So our people are not demanding money because we found debt, $1.7 million. You understand? If we can solve these problems, I have no doubt that in six years, seven years from today, we are a World Cup nation. It's, it's, it's 10 years from today, 2026, we are a World Cup nation. And not just once. But can we actually do it consistently? And that's what our objective is. We need help, for sure. We need help. Um, we have done very well, if you ask me. Stable federation. A, a federation is never stable in Kenya for three years. Moses, you, have no, you know this. Into three years, well in, no issues, no squabbles, no money lost. Proper things being done with the little we have. If we do more, I think we can go far. It's frustrating that our stadium uh, are not ready. And therefore we have stopped bidding for events. Because they're not ready. That's just a simple fact. Nyayo is not ready. I am told now in the new year it will be ready. One and a half years, no single match at Nyayo. Kipkeno is not ready. Kinoru is not ready. You know, we are pushing. And we push. But if we have these challenges about financing, can we solve that also? We really need that out. If we don't get it out, there's a problem. You know, FKF doesn't make facilities. There is some progress. A couple of counties have made stadia, Kisi, Kakamega. Now Mombasa has advertised. Nairobi. So there is progress, albeit slow. We have pushed this county to do that. So at that level, I think in that way, I'm happy with the push we've made. At national level, we have an issue about 
investing money in stadium and getting it done. Am I happy about it? No. Are we pushing? We push every day. We talk to them every day. They have financial challenges. And it's a national problem. You have seen our bunge. It's a national problem, Moses. So is that something we can do better? We can actually, when we commit to something, we can get it done. But if we don't get it done, there's an issue. As FKF, do we have a share of the blame? We believe that when a government commits to you, then they're going to do it. If the budget is cut from them and they don't do it, it's an issue. A lot of issues there, a lot of pointers there, and a lot of uh, things that needs to be taken with a lot of seriousness. I don't know from where you're sitting, Michael, if uh, someone asks you to rank FKF in a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being that they've done a brilliant job, where are you placing this federation? Well, I put them at 5.5. Uh, 5.5, uh, uh, yeah. slightly above average. Slightly above average because, honestly, when you listen to the, the president, Nick Mwendo, in terms of the achievements that they've, 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 they've done over the past few years, really, they've... They've been able to do a lot of things, but still not quite the finished article. I believe maybe in another three, four, five years, there should be something. Of course, these are teething problems, but uh, I justify my score at 5.5. Think about the government and all the things that the government have been able to do and all the promises that we've been getting from the government. And we talk about the stadiums, so to be specific, a lot of promises in regards to the same. but. We're still waiting, and we've seen how teams are struggling when they go to play the Kenyan Premier League. Nairobi, we only have a Kasarani that we will say is a fully functional national stadium, but will not be used to host all the matches that we have here in the country. What is your assessment on this? Can we do better? Can we go a step better? Or is this enough, even coming from the ministry, who are not even uh, responding to some of these issues? I think uh, I, I, I hold the view that the government should even be inconsequential when it comes to these matters sports. They should just be formulating policies. Um, the reason I say that, look at Uganda, and is it uh, Vipers FC, who recently unveiled uh, an, a rather small but very wonderful stadium. What I'm trying to say is that I think it's time that we as individuals, as, as, as federations and as teams actually took the bold step of, of investing in our own infrastructure, investing in ourselves because uh, like I go back to my, my statement of 50 years after independence and we're still relying on the government to, to help us, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think this is a government that has ever taken sports seriously. They only show up when we have put in heroic performances across the board. Uh, maybe just to deviate a bit to rugby, I remember 2016 going to the stadium, to the airport to meet Shuja from Singapore. And wow, you'd be shocked at the number of people who came there. So back to what you're saying, I think, I think the government is inconsequential in, in, in this. Let's, let's work as federations, as teams to, to better ourselves. Uh, this self-governance, I think, is what is going to, to, to help us going forward. Because if it is to depend on the government, we are in for a very long and frustrating wait. Uh, Colin Selassie de Makufu wa Lekitungulu, huh, what a Twitter handle there, is saying, uh, please don't listen to what uh, Nick Mondo is saying. At the same time, a lot <laughs> of blames goes to Rashid Echesa, that's a, uh, the CS of the sports, and they're also asking how can MPs get 180 million to go to Russia to benchmark, and <coughs> another younger MP, Mohaji Chopevu, he was our very own here, who we thought would help was busy in Russia um, uh, climate. What's your general take about this tweet? About the tweet, I yes. think he's, he's spot on, though he's been a bit harsh on, on, on Buonamwendo, yeah. but for the rest of it, he's spot on. Uh, it just justifies what we're saying about the government. There's no goodwill towards sports. There's no goodwill towards anything other than themselves. Let's just say it as it is. You talk about benchmarking. Uh, sometimes I also wonder what exactly they go out there to benchmark. And actually, if you members of parliament go out there and benchmark, then come back and we see some positive impact on the same. We're not saying it's a bad thing to go out there and do the benchmarking, but what exactly do we get out of it is a question that a lot of Kenyans will be asking. Jacob Gouda on the other side is saying that the Kenyan Premier League season was not the easiest of a season, but he's also saying that they're trying as much as possible to make sure that the calendar becomes a different calendar altogether. A lot of Kenyans have been saying that we want to play the same time as the European guys are play their league. And trust you me, after this time, the league will be resuming in December, maybe, a positive way that will link and make sure that the national Kenyan Premier League is uh, going in tandem with the other big leagues across the world. The Kenyan Premier League uh, uh, CEO had a lot to say, and this is uh, some of the highlights and the beautiful 
takes that he has in regards to the Kenyan Premier League soccer 2018 season. The challenges of stadiums, teams that uh, have their home base in Nairobi had to move out of Nairobi, let's say Machakos, Tika, even go as far as Afra, Nakuru and uh, Kisumu. And uh, uh, for that we do appeal to the government to try and hasten the stadiums are in Nairobi for our coming up season. We're already planning the 2018-2019 season. We'll have to uh, do like a crash course in terms of matches uh, being played even during the week so that we immediately adopt the, uh, the uh, August to May calendar come 2019 uh, season. So that will force the clubs to have many more matches in between uh, the week uh, to ensure that uh, we also maintain the standard whereby the league standing is also, um, uh, the matches played are also equ equitable and uh, ensure that uh, um, we strive very much to also increase the, the, the fan attendance at our stadiums. In terms of relegation promotion, first we have an agreement uh, between KPL and FKF whereby uh, two are relegated automatically at the end of the season and then we have a playoffs for home and away for number 16 and number 3 in the NSL. Uh, as it stands right now, um, I don't know the, the particulars in terms of uh, the club licensing because all the clubs have to undergo the club licensing process, which is conducted by FKF. And that must have been uh, what they underwent before they participated in S NSL. Yes, there has been a lot of issues when we talk and think about the Kenyan Premier League and how that season has been. And the club licensing also has been a critical issue. A lot of people maybe have been thinking what exactly happened after we say that we did the club licensing. And at the same time, I know this issue of club licensing has become a sensitive issue here in the league. But overall, what's your general assessment when we, we have a Kenyan Premier League in mind? I think... I think I think it's good. I think what they're doing in terms of club licensing in conjunction with the FKF is good because we are beginning to see a lot more things being taken seriously, a lot more professional management of the teams. We've seen some teams fall by the wayside. I recall the example of Mohoroni Youth who had a lot of issues around registration and so on and so forth. Um, like the assessment I gave for FKF, this is also a work in progress and let's see how this goes in the next uh, few years because the whole plan, the whole idea is to ensure that uh, Kenyan football, Kenyan sport is professionally run and you have to make some of these harsh decisions and that is what is happening at the moment. Gormai, I don't know how to do it in a harsh way because <laughs> yes, they know how to thrash other opponents and sometimes they do it in some beautiful ways and this time round they are bossing it all the way because they are the guys who are the champions, the 2018 Kenyan Premier League champions and they have done it with some impressive 75 points at the moment. On the second position, Bandari FC also, they've tried as much as possible to make their season become a season that they'll have a host number of reasons to smile and they're sitting on the second position while Ulinzi stars, they are on the third position. Is this a surprise when you look at how these teams have matched up and how they've shaped up the season? And Gormaya, another season, the 17th title with ease. And they also went to the Continental Championship. We, we, saw, we know how it all started also in the Confederation, in the CAF and then Confederation, all in the Champions League, sorry, and then the Confederation. Maybe not the best of results that all the Gormaya supporters would have wanted, but that's a huge and positive statement when we put the Kenyan Premier League on the continental showpiece. Exactly. Gorma here have been uh, proud ambassadors of Kenyan football this season. It's unfortunate that they did not go beyond the group stages of the CAF Confederations Cup. Looking at their performance in the KPL, I think it is uh, evident that they planned for the season. There's things that they're doing right that uh, my beloved AFC Leopards <laughs> are not. Mm -hmm. For example, tying down their players to long-term contracts, two, three-year contracts, which is breaking the mold from the traditional one-year contracts that we've seen. So you're able to keep players for a lot longer. And you know, once you've got uh, a bigger group of players together, you, you gel, you get to know what the coach wants. And also, unlike AFC Leopards, keeping the coach in for a long period of time. For Bandari, Bernard Mwalala took over mid-season after decamping from Zoya. He has been able to give them the impetus to, to work towards a second place finish. It is an impressive performance for the team from Mombasa. For Lindsay as well, You'd have to, 
you'd have to give it to them. And I just can't help but notice that uh, the teams in second and third are institutional teams. Mm -hmm. Tasca Robert Matano as well has, has, has done wonders since coming on board. For Sofa Parker, they started brightly and at one time were close with Gorma here. They fell off the pace. You just hope that it's not the same administrative issues or whatever issues that is uh, bedeviling AFC Leopards that, that is happening to them. In terms of the KPL this season, it has been interesting. Um, it's unfortunate that Wazito are probably going to drop back to the NSL. Yeah, but the, the bottom end of the log because yeah. it's uh, Thicker United that are uh, yeah. uh, the last Wazito. Yeah. Do you think that Wazito actually uh, had it rough? No, they didn't have it. They didn't have it rough. I think you know, for them coming in, they didn't have the resources that, for example, Zoya or Sharks had. Uh, remember, they even sold some of the key players mid-season. Uh, players like Harun Nyaka going to Nakumat FC, Piston Mutamba going to Sofa Parka, and those were two of their standout players. I think they did well to showcase their talents. Uh, it's unfortunate that they go down because even look at the points differential between them and uh, Nakumat. I can see it's uh, 36 and 31, not, not to show the performance from them. Maybe they were a bit green, but they'll be better. In terms of the KPL this season, it has been an interesting season. We know that Western Steamer is uh, up there, and we know that Thicker United was it or where they are heading. And the playoffs is also on the cards, and Nakumata or Poster Rangers. Do you think that these teams will have the stamina to make sure that they dance against the NSL bigwigs and maybe just try to be certain that they will be up in the Premier League come next season? I think, I think Nakumata and Poster Rangers have that stamina to, to fight against the NSL teams, although it won't be easy. Remember, these are knockout games, so you don't know what would happen. It's also about how you wake up on the day, so they have to probably start getting into the right mental frame right now. Yeah, they have to get to the right mental uh, frame uh, right now and tomorrow. There are matches on the cards because uh, Sony Sugar will be playing against the Wazito. Some of the matches that will be played in the final uh, penultimate, actually, uh, the final round of the Kenyan Premier League. So, uh, Sony Sugar against Wazito. We have the likes of FC Leopards who will be playing against Nzoia. Crucial tie maybe for Nzoia just to get uh, some uh, points uh, there. For Gormaya, they will try to go head on against the Tasca FC. FC Leopards, yes, Wazito. Sony Sugar, Wazito. Sorry, Zoo. Kericho against uh, Sofa Parker there. Very, very crucial and important uh, ties. And uh, other ties on the cards, I know Mathari United will be playing against Ulinzi Stars. Uh, Bandari against uh, Thika United. What, what does uh, it tell you? Uh, we will be winding up with some bang here. Yes, we will be winding up with a bang, although you feel teams like Thika United may not have any fight uh, to, 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 to take to Bandari. But season ending on a high, the teams go on a is it three month break before resuming in December. Yeah. It'll be a quick turnaround for them. Um, it's been a good season and it's finally great to see Kenya aligning itself to the international calendar in terms of league competitions. Yeah, Kenya aligning themselves and they're trying to make sure that they become in tandem with all the other guys are doing. And trust you me, we have guys that can score goals in the Kenyan Premier League. And I know when we look at the guys who've been able to rack in a lot of goals at this time out, one man for me comes in mind, and that is Elvis Rupia. 15 goals. He's not in the Kenyan Premier League. He was able to net these goals before, um, before actually uh, decamping. And now... Jacques Tusenge, as much as he tops up there, and we also have the likes of Eric Paito, the league maybe, we, at, at this point, a lot of people will be saying that we would have been talking about 2021, 20, 22, 23 goals plus going up there. Yeah, and had Elvis Rupia stayed, he would have probably matched Alan Wanga's record from 2007 with Tasca. Um, well, he secured the move out of the country. That's good for him. Uh, I think it's, it's a bit still upsetting that we're not scoring as many goals as we'd like to because in that absence and Jacques Tuisenge has still not caught up. Uh, let's see how attacking play is going to be going into the next season. Yeah, so a lot of responsibilities for Jacques Tuisenge, Eric Paito. They have uh, 15 goals. Eric Rupia uh, also there with the 15 goals. Uh, Madoya. A lot of people were talking about Madoya and maybe they're saying yeah, last time out he did, he did not deserve the gong that he was uh, given. But trust you me, the young man has shown the world that uh, he knows what he's doing. A midfielder at the same time, he's been able to score 14 goals. And uh, you never know, maybe tomorrow he might be able to rack in some other goals uh, for his uh, side. And uh, for Kipkuri, Nicolas, 
A lot of people are talking about uh, uh, Kipkuri uh, Nicholas and they're saying that uh, for Zoo, maybe also he is not uh, that uh, sharp. But yes, he's shown the world, he's shown the country that he can score those uh, goals. We'll take a short commercial break, but when we come back, we'll find what is happening in the Varsity League. Today is a uh, day two. A lot of action is down there. At the same time, we'll take a look and uh, talk about uh, some swimming. Do you love swimming? Do you love water even to, to begin with before loving that swimming? That and much more after this short commercial break. Thank you.